All right. Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? It's Devin, aka Miles Away here. Um, wanted to do a bit of a different video this time. I'm gonna do actually like a um, kind of start to finish, maybe not quite to the end in one video, but kind of like a project walkthrough to show you guys my workflow, um, especially my workflow using these two analog synths here. So um, I don't know if most of you guys know, but um, you've seen this one in my videos quite a few times. This is a Korg Prologue. Um, so I use this all the time on all of my all of my tracks, all the chords. It's a beautiful synth. Um, and then this is actually the newest addition to my studio here. It's a Moog Matriarch. So a uh, really amazing piece of equipment. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd give you guys kind of an idea of what my workflow looks like and why I'm such a big fan of using analog equipment. Um, now disclaimer, you 100% do not need equipment like this to make good music. Good music comes from the ideas and the emotions behind it. Um, you can do pretty much exactly what I'm gonna do now using software synths, and I'll put a list of some of my favorite cheap or free synths in the description as well. Um, but yeah, without further ado, um, let's just kind of see what we, we come up with here. I'm excited to, to see. First, important sip of the coffee. All right, so. I, I thought of starting off with this kind of little sequence, um, something like this. Like, I'm a big fan of like uh, just adding in any sort of repeating motif that can kind of just um, really like make the song tie together, um, and then you can play chords underneath it, and the movement will create these really interesting like um, cadences. What what a cadence is is it's like. It, let's see if I, I can explain it in a, in a simple way. And any music theory experts, feel free to correct me here, but a cadence is, is a certain harmonic interval relationship that makes a resolution, makes your brain really want a resolution to a different one. So um, yeah, I'm a really big fan of these like simple melodies, like repeat, and then you can kind of get um, some chords going over top. So uh, I, just, I just midied out um, that riff, so we're gonna play it. Just repeating. Beautiful sound. So the this this is basically an initial patch. Four oscillators playing square waves on the matriarch. Um, and then the really nice delay is coming from the analog delay that's built in. It's a stereo BBD delay. One of my favorite things about the synth, it just sounds amazing. While that's repeating, we're gonna go over to the prologue here, which is a polyphonic synth, meaning it can play full chords. So a really beautiful sound right off the bat when you just fire it up. We're actually gonna use this one, but we're gonna edit it. So um, what you can see here, and I'll do a, a, another video with more of a close up, if you guys are interested to see like how I do sound design, that kind of thing, because um, it's gonna be a bit hard to see from this angle, but basically we're gonna shorten the envelopes. So instead of a really like wide whoosh sound, it's gonna be a fast doom attack. So right now, here it's got that rising, it's got a slow attack, so it rises up to make the sound. And then as we shorten it, um, you'll see the sound becomes more plucky. Beautiful, okay, cool. Now we're gonna, we're gonna bring down the filter so it's a lot more soft. I always play in the key of C uh, when I'm recording MIDI, um, and then I'll transpose it after, just because I'm not the greatest piano player. Um, but I do want to get that like human emotion of actually being, um, you know, playing the parts live so much as recording them with typing in notes. So. Um, let's see what we can come up with. I'm just gonna basically loop the Moog, the Moog, sorry, and then play some chords underneath and we'll see if we can get anything we like. And if we can, we'll record it. Cool.
something cool in there. Um, I think I'm gonna record that into MIDI and then we can mess with the notes after. So um, we'll see how that sounds. Cool. So we're gonna go and quantize this. Um, so yeah, the great thing about using these analog synths with MIDI um, is that you can kind of just treat them like a software synth, but then you get that like tangible feeling of recording live as well too. Um, so let's check this out. Quantize, then we'll, uh, we'll play a melody over top of it. So it sounds like this. sound for now we can always change it later if we want I like to write like these melodies where um it's kind of like you can't really tell if it's happy or sad i find that's like one of the things that really characterizes my music is like maybe like nostalgic is the best way of describing it a lot of artists i look up to like porter robinson matt yon john hopkins um, I find they do that really well where you're listening to this song and even if it's in a major key, um, you can't help but feel like a little bit of like longing or melancholy. Um, that's the kind of stuff I love. So we're gonna try and write a, a melody that maybe makes us think of, even though it's a very like major key song, uh, we're gonna try and write a melody that kind of maybe makes us think of like, you know, the past or forgotten love, something like that. Let's see what, let's see what we can come up with. Okay. something like in there I'm not sure if I love all of it but um, now we're gonna go in and we're gonna edit the notes individually with MIDI so I feel like it's got to move forward a little bit it's it's too um, too predictable having it hit right on the downbeat of bar six so we're gonna move the note So we're gonna move the uh The song is obviously in C right now, um, but so I like to use the seventh a lot. So that would be a B, um, the note that comes right before, uh, like right before the the resolution of the octave. So I find that using seventh intervals a lot, it kind of gives your music this like like we were talking about, like melancholic, nostalgic sound. Okay, quick sip of the coffee, then back at it. Mmm, such good coffee. I love it. Okay, all right. Let's try that crazy long release on this sound, by the way. We, we probably will have to take. 
tame that later. But because we're going to the uh, E minor chord, uh, the C sounds great. It's kind of like a, you know, if you let's see here, if you make a, an E minor chord. Here. If you raise the B to a C, because the B is a fifth for the E minor chord. If you raise the B to the C at the very top, it sounds beautiful. It's so evil, but you kind of want it to resolve. Cool. So it's actually less predictable in this case to use the tonic, the C, which is really interesting. Uh, again, if you guys want me to do like a full music theory video sometime, I, I'll be happy to. Just let me know what you want in the comments. Um, if this is boring you guys, let me know as well. I'll stick to the cool stuff with the synths, but uh, all right. So what we can do now is we're going to copy our MIDI and we're going to create a, a new separate channel um, with, let's grab some contact. So for those of you guys who don't know, contact, amazing plugin. Um, I, I'm an owner of Complete Ultimate, um, huge Native Instruments fan. Um, I, I use their products all the time. So basically contact is a sampler and there's tons and tons of different makers that make amazing sample packs for contact. And uh, yeah, so let's check it out. All right. I'm not sure why my screen just went really dark here. That's odd. We can live with it. Okay, it's cool. So we're gonna create a uh, MIDI channel here and then Putting in here. So, okay, so now we have, we're gonna grab like a bell sound, um, something just to bring out the melody here. Let's go grab a factory um, band. No, let's go. Maybe some world bells. If we turn on the master volume, we can just hear that. That could be nice with some like uh, reverb. Um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go and uh, do fixed note length. It's a function in Logic um, to basically change the notes to all be the same length. Um, Cause with the synth, it's good to have that kind of human feeling of them keep being different lengths, but with the supporting bell, we're gonna keep them similar. And then we can add a little bit of reverb here. Um, so I'm a huge fan of the Valhalla reverbs. Uh, I think they sound amazing, so. ready to basically record um, to audio. So again, one of the limitations, I like it a lot, um, but some people will hate it, of working with analog is you have to print uh, 
you have to print your, your sound audio. You can't just leave it in MIDI uh, because we're gonna wanna add more tracks. Uh, so yeah, let's check it out. Um, let's, let's try this, we're gonna double it. So we're gonna change the filter cutoff to just be a steady climb the second time. Pretty loud. Also going to print the uh, the Moog to audio, um, which will allow me to do some like live um, filter movement. So, like with this sound, what will give it movements is opening and shutting. So, um, cool. Let's make it happen. All right. So, I'm going to unrecord that, record both of these, and then yeah, let's see how this sounds. good um, now you guys can tell so we printed it to audio so there's our two audio tracks um, the reason why I love working like this is it kind of forces you to you know just settle with what you've made and be okay with things maybe being imperfect um, which in the end I feel like might even create more human music I don't know um, you guys tell me your thoughts what you think but um, yeah okay cool so we are going to bounce this to audio as well contact lock one um, so yeah, that's when I do a project tour later on of some of my tracks like Alone Tonight or Clear, you guys are going to tell like pretty much everything is in audio. Um, that's because I just, like I mentioned, I just love working with audio. You can also do really cool things like chopping it up and resampling and doing these like little glitch fade outs and stuff. So um, yeah. All right. So I think the next thing we want to get in here is some drums. So. Normally I would do drums, uh, I, like, I just recently got this machine, I think it's out of frame, um, but I don't fully know how to use it well enough yet um, to you know, be using it in a live tutorial, it would be really boring. Um, so we're gonna do our drums the way I usually do them, in battery, 
and with Audio Finder. So um, I use Audio Finder. It's basically just a sample library. Like it's where I keep all of my samples. That way I can just search if I want like clap. We have a clap, cool. Um, so really nice and easy. Oh, it's a bit loud though, cool. Okay, cool. So um, I think we are gonna have brightness came back awesome sweet so basically we're gonna grab um, some reverb and essentially work into putting this one into the sound sweet okay so So here we're gonna start adding in the claps. Um, so it's a you know it's just kind of like a classic way to build up the sound. So we're gonna do claps on two and four, very standard stuff here. Um, this would be like kind of a good intro song for a show, I think. Like it's gonna build up really slowly, and then eventually, I don't know what we're gonna do for the drop yet, that but uh, we'll see. Let's see if we have a tambourine loop. If not, we can make one with Logic's drummer. Well, I like that as like a lead in. Um, the cool thing about using Audio Finder is sometimes you don't exactly get what you like search for, um, but you have these happy accidents where it's like, well, okay, that actually sounds sweet. So um, this is one of those cases. I think this would be a great um, riser to go in here. So. down and put some reverb on it or delay actually let's do delay um, you probably you guys are probably noticing I'm using a lot of reverbs and delays um, that's because you know a lot of the way you get music to sound so big is by using tasteful amounts of reverb and delay you don't want to drench everything in reverb and delay otherwise it will uh, you know your song will get really messy and it'll be really hard to mix um, but if you're able to do it in a tasteful way it can really give this impression that you're like you're, it's like that epic, like super far away from a mountaintop, that kind of sound. So. Okay, cool. It's a little bit too much right now, but we can make that work. So this is my favorite delay plugin. Again, shout out to Native Instruments. Um, you guys will see me use this on everything. It even has a diffusion mode, um, which is basically just reverb. So you can, if I, if I had to recommend one plugin uh, for delay and reverb, I would even take this over Valhalla. I just think that Replica XT is like amazing. I'll, I'll do a tutorial on it sometimes, but this is probably like the definitive sound of all the miles away, like spacey stuff. So cool. Um, let's listen here. <laughs> grab a tambourine loop so uh, I'm gonna use Logic's drummer it's pretty sweet so what Logic's drummer will do is it actually it's like it, I'm not sure how the software works but it'll basically just be a live drummer that you can tell them what to play so so we're gonna disable everything make them even though we love drum fills make them have zero drum fills and just enable the tambourine A little bit of swing. Okay, cool. All right, so. Nice, we like it. Okay, so now we're gonna bounce that tambourine. 
Um, again, everything in audio, so we don't have to go back on our decisions. And there we go, we've got a tambourine song. <laughs> tuning saw waves against each other and again I'll explain more in my sound design video but it'll sound like this so one saw wave Now the really cool thing about this synthesizer is you actually can control the left and right sides of the filter separately. Um, so this is what this will sound like. So what that does, and one of the reasons why I got this, is that actually allows you to really specific, specifically um, choose the stereo image you want. So we already have the, the plucky sound is gonna take up a lot of the right side of the speaker. So we're gonna make the high end of the bass live in the left side of the speaker. So let's do that. Beautiful, okay, let's see if we need any resonance, but I'm liking how that sounds so far. Um, okay, so we'll copy the MIDI wherever it's gone, see if I don't lose it first. Okay, nice. So we've got our bass MIDI here. So we're gonna copy, paste, put everything perfectly quantized because we can, and then make it all the same length. Like it. Let's record it. Again, we're going fast. We're just going to record as soon as we find something we like. So. and easy um, the volume is definitely too loud so we're gonna have to tame that but um, let's 
do a little bit of compression on it. Love it. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just going to quickly EQ out some of the problem frequencies here. Um, you'll find that a lot of the time the low mids or the 500 range, like 200 to 500 is a big problem frequency that a lot of um, producers will struggle with. I've struggled with it for ages, so um, you always want to be very careful that there's not too much build up. all for today uh, I'm gonna continue this track another time um, we'll do a drop and then uh, I'll show you guys my drop production how we do like those big future based chords and everything but I think this is a good start for an intro um, let me know what kind of content you guys want to see if you guys want to see more of the sound design stuff more of the music theory stuff or more just like writing like this but uh, yeah so hope you enjoyed part one of miles away start to finish um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and otherwise see you next time